updated and we have the D112 so I didn't okay uh, uh, what's this one so uh, one thing that I could really use yeah is uh, knowing where everything is going this is one this is two this is yeah. three this is four five six the only difference is that this is seven in there but eight. Okay. And also on the computer, these are the same. So I tried to make it the same as much as possible. The okay. channels that you're going to select. Okay. first said listen man when he first talked after how many years 30 years he said to me listen man after all these years of reconnecting he said we got to catch this moment with an album I was like wow really you're over there and he goes can you make it over here I said ah, bad chance because you know stuff going on here and I have a six-year-old son and then he goes okay if you can't come over here if you can't come to me I'll come to you man that, that's, that's that started game. it all that has to be I'll it. come to you. How did you how did you reconnect? Got into Facebook. Right? Right. And I realized, oh the internet. <laughs> you can find people that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he, So I did. I just typed up his name and I'm like, holy crap. Someone told me that you were I guess it was Butch Laguatin told me you were teaching at a college and teaching classical guitar. And so um I then began looking, and I think somebody said the University of Manila. So I was looking, trying oh, to yeah, find, right? Yeah. I couldn't find any trace of him. And I was working with the internet, but it was early in the internet days, you know, early 90s. And, um, and quite frankly, I really kind of figured the worst. I thought know? I died. Because he, 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 he burned the candle pretty, pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, hard. both ends. <laughs> All sides, actually. And so out of the blue, we got this email from from you via Facebook and it was just like and that was it man yeah this is this is a this is needs to happen 
The first, first thing he says is, he types the emails. He says, man, I think about you every day. Every time I pick up a guitar? Yeah. Because he taught me exercises that taught me to play guitar. You know, it's like so. Yeah. Ain't the one on music. All right. That's what you told me. That's that was the warm up you yeah, were yeah, telling me. Yeah. That's what I think of you. And that's how I warm up every day. Yeah. Because when when I first got to New York and first enrolled in Browning, my fav my first day there, I remember that snow. Browning was the school that we went yeah, to. Yeah, Browning was the school, and you know the the uh, headmaster brings me in. Who has a chair uh, for Mr. Roxas so all the way from the Philippines or something like that? So it was Roxa. like this kid was coming in late. And they were saying, you know, who wants to show him around and you know, I guess kind of be the guide for the day. And I was like, I'll do it, you know. And, and you came over, sat and down. Never be the, been the same since. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then we got to the guitar talk, and then we ended up in your place playing guitar. And I was like, oh, you really can play. I was just, you know, I'm I just... I didn't know that. I couldn't play. I, so. I was pretending really? compared to what you were doing, dude. Yeah, you were... And, uh, like, I didn't I didn't know anything on the guitar. I was just trying to trying to figure it out. And so I st you started teaching me things um, on the guitar and in life. And some of them were things that you probably shouldn't have taught an 11-year-old boy. He, was, he, he taught me to smoke a cigarette while playing guitar, which is a very it's a refined... Uh, talent. You have to make sure the smoke doesn't get in your eyes. So you've got to make sure the cigarette's facing out to the side. And then when you're not smoking it, you got to do the Keith Richards and put, yeah, it, on and put it on the headstock behind the, the string, guitar. right? And then you can play it like that. Yeah. yeah. I, in fact, you know, it's really funny because that was the first thing Pamela, who's my wife now, um, when with the first time she ever saw me make music. That's really the first time. I think it was the second time she'd ever seen me. The first time she, when she realized she liked me. Really. Somebody else was lighting a cigarette while I was for me. I'm holding a cigarette out the side the way Butch taught me, and someone's lighting it. And I'm playing a lead solo with a band, like in a rehearsal. Uh, and she walked in. She was like, "Who is that cool guy?" <laughs> so if you hadn't I wanted to ask do her that, that. I, I never would have gotten my wife to be interested in me. So I want to ask her that. I wanna, what really happened? Though? How did all these events lead up to the to the project that you're working on now? We played so much music together. The very first record I ever made back in 1983 that went to vinyl was um, just a 45. Uh, and uh, one track, well, actually two tracks, one each side, A, a side, B side. The A side was this song called Just a Matter, Matter of Time. Time. And the flip side was an acoustic kind of folky thing called Foreigners. And um, he played guitar solos on both of them. Anyway, so we did those records together. We did those early recordings together. And then we went off and did our thing. I've done 20 odd records of my music over the years, and I've never gotten to work with this guy again. So finding him was like, you know, that was our first language. So let's go back to the yeah. first language. Because right when we picked it up, when he arrived and we started playing, it was there. Like it never left, man. We were like, you could tell because we're like always on opposite ends of opposite ends of the guitar, so you get much more harmony. And we, we always played like that. Yeah. Either he was playing a chords higher up, and I was playing low, or he was playing low, and I was playing high. You know. And it's sometimes it's hard to adjust to people, but with us, it's always been off the bat. We're we're there. We, really we cool. played in that lunch yesterday, and that was cool. He just I starts mean. like he starts just doing a riff. And I, well, I'm still getting my guitar out of the the, the box, and I, I I sit down next to him and I just write into it, and the two of us had this journey together. It's beautiful. I don't know where the hell it came from, but it was <laughs> yeah. really cool, you know. And it was like, that's us, mm -hmm. you know. It's like uh, sitting in a really comfortable sofa, you know. It's yeah, like you go a back good. after a long time, you sit that's back down in it, and it just fits your body because you always sat there, and that is yeah. It's like it's. It's home, no matter where the hell we are. And that's really cool. I don't have that relationship with a lot of musicians. I've worked with a lot of great musicians in my life. I've not had that experience usually. Yeah, me mm -hmm. too. It's very hard to find somebody that... We I mean, make good music, but it's not as visceral. Mm -hmm. right? So what are some uh, expectations, hopes, dreams uh, from the album itself that you're working on right now? The only expectation, like, if there's any, I have is in the playing, you know, the connecting, the reconnecting, and the playing through the... Uh, capturing that moment, as he said in the beginning, through the music, man. And, and 
with this guy, and this guy captures it pretty good. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. Thank you. We found Dwayne. He's alive. Sky dog. Sky dog. Sky dog. Hallelujah. All right, so this is project with your dad, and, uh, with uh, his longtime buddy that reconnected. Where do you fit in? Do you, do you just feel like, hey, I'm just along for the ride, and you feel like you're a uh, relationship, like what they're talking about, a relationship, uh, you feel like you're a part of this? When I talk about my relationship with my father, um, I don't really talk about it as a father-son relationship. Um, sometimes I'll call it a big brother-little brother relationship, um, or more often I, I just you know refer to him as my best friend. He's been my collaborator ever since I can remember. Um, ever since I started making music, he was you know there giving me input, helping me, uh, telling me to you know buckle down and keep writing or you know. Um, listen to this, listen to that. And with that, I've kind of inherited some of his old best friends. Um, and the big group, uh, you know, kind of Alden and Scott, um, who were part of this group uh, with Reese and Bush back in middle school, kind of the high school age, and, you know, all that. To me, it's kind of like finding this. Find, finding the, 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 the lost person in that group that I've heard about, it's kind of like watching the, the, the whole picture finally being filmed up. So that's, that's been kind of beautiful. On the other hand, I've also been Reese's engineer. Ever since I started getting into recording, um, I've kind of slowly been taking more and more of a role in his, in his productions. Um, so, I'm kind of like his partner in crime uh, in that way, I'm the, the guy that makes everything sound good. So uh, what are some of the challenges of being able to go to another country and make this huge uh, reunion project a reality? Uh, challenges, uh, the big one has to do with gear limitations. And sitting down and needing to go, okay, so what is the bare minimum of what I need? And how do we get that packed for a plane? I'm kind of going, oh man, like, I want, I want that and that and that and that, but I can't bring it all with me. So I think that's, that's been the, the biggest challenge. What are you wanting to contribute to the album? Yeah, a lot of, what a lot of people don't really realize is that um, the audio engineer is just as much a creative force and elements in the uh, whole recording process as the musician. Um, so that's kind of, that's how I, how I see myself. Um, I have a lot of personal goals of, uh, you know, always trying to make things not sound a certain way, but sound a certain level, but, you know, a certain quality. And I think that's, that's what I've got to contribute, um, is this, uh, attention to, to, to detail in that area that you know they don't they don't want to have to be thinking about I mean Reese he's just as interested in that part of the you know creative project as, as, as I am um, but I think part of the, I think the reason he brings me along also is he recognizes that uh, he is able to focus more on the part that he actually likes more. Uh, so I'm giving him the ability to Kind of just focus on the music and on the uh, the, the, the reconnection with Bush. Um, I think I also bring a certain lightheartedness to the session. Um, you know, I keep Reese from getting to uh, he calls it his his A type. He, gets, he has a very alpha personality when he gets in the studio sometimes. I'm taking away the need. For him to do that a little bit, um, so he can, he can enjoy everything more. Um, yeah, so I guess really I, I see myself as a facilitator, um, and also as an extra creative force. Is there anything that that you're hoping this this album communicates to the others, like a message? I'm not really thinking about the final product. I'm not thinking about 
where it's going to go, what it's going to do. It's all about being there in the moment and enjoying it. Because uh, for most of the work that I've done in the studio, I don't get to do that. You know, I, I have to be thinking about you know client needs. I have to be thinking about uh, you know if the producer likes it, and you know if they're going to be able to have other people liking it. You know, and the chance to just sit back and go, I want to make the best possible thing I can, regardless of what anybody else thinks, is great. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's that. I mean, that's that's the feel whenever I'm working with Bruce, because he's not looking to be signed anymore. And, I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, for me, it's kind of like a photo album. Yeah. You know, I've got photo albums of um, of dear friends and loved ones, and I, I return to them a lot, you know. Uh, and just, like, look back, and it's so funny to, you know, go back and see what you look like when you were a geeky kid or whatever it is, right? You know, well, this is that moment. You're thin. And now... We were yeah, thin. Yeah, exactly. We used to be thin. Um, what happened to that? Oh, I know what it is. You feed me every two hours. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> the, the, um, uh, but but really, to have that, to capture the moment, because first of all, that reconnection is never going to happen again, right? Because we're not going to fall apart. Yeah. We're not going right, right. to lose each other again. And so, that's a beautiful thing. So what happens after that is really all cream. You know, I mean, I, I will put the music out there, you know, it's because it's something I'm really, I'm already really excited about the music we're making. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's different from anything that I've ever done before. Me too. So, we're hoping that, you know, maybe other people will like that, but, you know, the concept of, you know, getting a record deal and all that stuff, that doesn't, that's not the motivation. You know, it, it hasn't, for me, been a motivation, even playing out live, it hasn't been a motivation for over a decade. The creative process, the conversation that happens here, mm -hmm. is, to me, the, the purest and most beautiful thing. It's really cool to have it on stage with people, but I'm so self-conscious that I don't enjoy that kind of seat-of-the-pants thing in front of people. If we're in the room and the tape is rolling, I can always do it again. No big deal. You know, so I think for me it's a more comfortable creative process than live performance. And playing live. And that's how it's different. Uh, oh, I'll right take now. chances in the studio that I'll never take on stage. Yeah. And this project is different from the other ones, anything you've done before because of that? Well, no, because I would normally do that in a recording studio. <clears throat> but I think that this man is, is, has got a very different language on the instrument than other people that I normally play with. I mean, he, he, he left rock and... I went to classical music. Mm -hmm. How long were you doing classical? Oh, I don't know. It was 20 years. 20 some years. And I, I ditched everything. All my, all, anything electric, I went sort of purist in a way. And then the past 10 years, I think, uh, yeah, about 10 years, then I picked up the electric again and went into jazz and, and, and stuff like that. But it, you know, and it takes some adjusting going from the electric to this guitar because uh, I remember saying once that this is a totally different guitar than the electric. This being the, the classical guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, and then I would tell that to people and they said, no, it's a guitar. I said, no, you, got, you have to approach it differently or else you, you won't make it sound like it's supposed to. So, you know, I, with, with, that, with that mindset, so then I play both guitars now and, and I went back to it. But those are my roots and I was telling him, you know, this guy is my root. You know, this is the first time I started thinking about all that. Well, being in New York and being with Reese, it was, you know, for a kid from Manila, it was mind-blowing. About a week ago, I, um, in anticipation of this of this session, just picking up the instrument, I started looking at it. I said, okay, so what does Butch see this as? How does Butch see this instrument? I know there's a lot more complexity to this thing than I even allow myself to think about. So, coming into it, it was like, okay, this is this is going to be different because of that. So for me, I'm, somehow I think it's flavoring. You know, I think, so, it so it's, it's very different because of that. You're talking about sharing it as like a photo album with your kids, with your friends. So once they hear um, or see the project and understand it, what's the message you, you'd want them to take home with them? For me, it's, it's you know, 
let's not do things solely for the for the economics of it. I can understand the big problems involved with that, but you know, you should put some things aside to do it for the total art of it, but for the relationships you had, and anybody has with with their family, their best friends, the world, well, you know, uh, 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 try to express that in a in a manner that's totally pure. Because here it gets to be very pure. The one who said, it was Dylan, the one who said, you know, uh, in, in the studio you, you go through a microscope to examine all these intricacies or, or simplicities <coughs> of music you're playing. I think also, I mean, a lot of the lyrics, because over the past uh, five days I've written a lot of new material that's going on this recording, and a, con a, con a constant message in the song is the relationship and the communication that is visceral and almost in the DNA of it. Seriously, it's, there, is, there is a kind of almost a genetic relationship here. Um, and the best records I've ever done are done with relationship involved. This, it's easy because it's just part of us, right? I mean, I was looking at the, at the Pro Tools uh, session uh, the other day over Dylan's shoulder, and I'm always ahead. I'm like, I'm really kind of, I, 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 I'm ahead of the beat when I play guitar, to the point that I've had issues with a lot of recording, uh, recordings in the past, where it's been made me uncomfortable, made the band uncomfortable, kind of, and then I got hyper self-aware, that microscope, you know, as yeah, the artist, we're artist, as the musician, that whatever, we're under a microscope and we can get really self-conscious. But this, we start playing and we're both ahead. That was so funny. And yeah. Harold. Yeah, and, and Harold. Harold. And Ruben. I was looking at it, I was like, man, we're all like, right, that's, that's really cool. We could just slide all that stuff right to the <laughs> clock and we're all doing the same thing. Because they followed me wordlessly. I mean, there wasn't anybody saying, oh, he's ahead. This is wrong. It was more like, okay, he's ahead. Let's all be ahead, you know? And then we're all together and we're not really ahead anymore, are we? Take out the click and it feels great. That was beautiful. That was a really nice moment to recognize that for me. Absolutely. Is there a particular song or track that you guys have, or or just even one one song in particular that you would highlight that just really perfectly? Well, I I have a, a piece that I wrote a theme for him, because for all of this. Tall Luke's. Yeah, and uh, and he just wrote word, wrote lyrics, and it was beautiful. And we recorded it the other day. And that's one of my favorites. It's so different, but. Uh, well, we both did do it when I give him an idea and, you know, and we did it in like, what, less than a day. I mean, you wrote... I wrote the lyrics yeah. in, about, in about 20 minutes in the middle of the night. Childlike wonderment We stood in all then up we went Side by side Reaching for clouds to rise Breathing in your tiny hand in mine. I was waking up in the middle of the night having these melodies that he'd been playing to me all day. I was yours ever and always. Promises. This was forever defining the weed Leaping to greater heights Swinging in branches of taller trees It involves uh, two kids climbing a tree Though it was years ago It's all still clear in my mind As if it were yesterday In tall oaks we climbed and climbed The complexity of climbing higher, their fear, but also their, the exhilaration of being up above the other trees as they go higher and higher and higher. Again, all somehow smaller now as then. No fear of falling side by side, hunting out handholds, breathing.
breathing in cautious to exhale though it was years ago it's all still clear in my mind as if it were yesterday Oaks we climb down, climb. As these two kids are up in the tree, they're looking around them and they're realizing that all those kids that they started climbing with aren't there anymore. Sample a grip before taking the leap on a limb and a prayer we had faith. That one another would always catch hold. The slivers of fiber might break But in the end it was never just us So many companions would fall They picked the branches that we wouldn't trust And those trees that we choose so tall. And that the branches that these two kids saw is probably an unwise decision to hold on to were the ones that broke and people fell away. Though it was a lifetime ago, each leap is so clear in my mind as if it were yesterday. We climbed and climbed. And so the metaphor is either to the longevity of friendship and love or the longevity of luck, <laughs> you know, but that we're both still here. Yeah. of direction but together we follow something pure often taken in by self deception but walking with you I feel assured I'm walking right for the first time in a long long time getting it for